high level. So uh, being able to um, show respect to others and not expect any respect in return. In fact, in this world, if we're actually expecting any respect, then we're living in deep illusion. You know, even no matter where we are, somehow or other, we, the mind always allows, you know, to convince us that somehow I should at least get respect here. But this world is not a place for us to come and get respect. Uh, like Srila Prabhupada said, if you're here with a human body or a body, then you may as well have the word thief tattooed across your forehead, you know, and we're basically in prison. So if you expect to get respect in prison, Carlos, who he sees all kinds of people there, <laughs> the prison house. Uh, the Buddha Bhagavan who gave one nice talk where he was saying that, you know, we come here demanding this, demanding that, but we forget, oh, this is a prison. So if you're in prison and you're banging on the bar saying, I don't want this porridge, I want a four-course meal for breakfast, hot chapatis, rice, dal, rice, samji, hot halibut, cooked by... Jagat Palana Prabhu, it's like, then the guard is going to say, this guy's crackers, he's completely nuts, you're in prison, shut up, eat the porridge, or starve, whatever. <laughs> but we have this misconception that somehow I should be getting something specific here, and specifically in this context, some respect. Uh, Jesus, you could say, great personality, probably deserved a little bit of respect. But he was washing the feet of the person who was about to have him killed. So this is very, uh, very high level of uh, forgiveness and respect and compassion. So I'll end here. I have many other things to uh, say, but we're quite over time. I'm sure everyone is uh, experiencing the aftermath of the marathon. It was nice to see everyone, most devotees here for the morning program, and enthusiastic and live and chanting and dancing. Uh, Radha Raman Prabhu uh, used to say that the sign of a, <clears throat> a truly spiritual marathon, because he'd been around to see some marathons that ended, probably Raman Prabhu remembers a few, that didn't necessarily end with a truly spiritual uh, mentality amongst the Vaishnavas. <laughs> I remember being told one story of the two, two top personalities like going out all night, late at night, and distributing books until the early hours. And then the one that won, somehow I think they, he said, oh, you distributed after midnight or something like that. And then, no, and then they said, no, I think they came to blows, didn't it? No, well, what happened was uh, reading the scores the next morning, and when this devotee saw he'd lost that morning, he went downstairs to the restaurant and spoke to one uh, devotee and convinced him to buy a set. And then he came upstairs and put in his score of a set at the last minute. Everybody here talking and take it very nicely. <laughs> so, so the uh, temple president had to step in. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I stopped competing because that way I can be there to step in. <laughs> Someone else needs to step in for it. So, but anyway, this, what's that? In case you're about to So, uh, but he said there. You know, if at the end of the marathon devotees are actually enlivened and inspired by the Sankirtan and by the book distribution and they, they want to carry on and feel, you know, inclined to, to, to do more book distribution, he said that this is a very, very good sign that devotees are actually functioning on the spiritual platform as opposed to some sort of materialistic platform. Um, so, like that. Anyone have any questions, comments, corrections? Criticizements. Is your opportunity? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask a question, yeah, please. Yes, such a Well, um, when Radha Maharaj was here recently, he was speaking about Prahlad Maharaj mm -hmm. and how um, he was offering all respects and not expecting any respect in return. And he was saying we should come to that point. Um, <coughs> speaking here. And rather not Marjorie. Was... <coughs> Hare Krishna. I think it's always just good things to be turned up a little bit. Okay. Hare Krishna. Can you hear? Yeah. So when Radhanath Maharaj was here recently, he was talking about Prahlad Maharaj 
offering all respect to Rana Kashyapur and also not expecting any respect in return. Mm -hmm. So Marge explained that this is because his pleasure was seeing respect, sorry, seeing, um, seeing others respected more than the pleasure he received from being respected himself. So then how do you, how do you even conceive of, of coming to such a point? Or how do you even practice um, offering all respects to others in such a way? And what are the steps that seem so inconceivable? <laughs> <laughs> this coming from one of the most humble and respectful people I think I've ever met. <laughs> So what are the steps to coming to that level of respect? Um, uh, very good question. The first, first step really is to cultivate knowledge and understanding that this is the way that we should be acting with one another. Um, understanding that, um, you know, why other people actually deserve respect. I mean, even in the situation with Pallad Maharaj, you know, it's sort of like what's that uh, statement that a um, uh, sort of saintly person or an advanced person can find gold even in a filthy place. So in the modern day, that translates into someone who's able to, you know, ultimately be positive in any kind of situation. So even Pallad Maharaj, you know, he could he could see, well, you know, this is my father. He's kind of brought me into the world. He, you know, he clothes me, he takes care of me, he provides some education. You know, this person is the king. He you know, the king of the demons, but he's still king. <laughs> you know, and you don't just become a king for you know nothing. Must he must have some shakti, some you know. So in this way, you can go about trying to deduce that at least there should be some level of uh, respect. But it wasn't also that Pallad Maharaj was counseling <laughs> to Hiranyakashipu. He was respectful because he was also senior, etiquette is there. Um, another <coughs> Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament, it's the statement of Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of the Brahmins, you know, that um, the devotees, you know, they're, you know, we should understand what is the proper etiquette and always uh, 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 aspire to to follow the etiquette despite whatever the mind is screaming or saying that if we follow the etiquette then and in one sense then we're we're protected and um, if we're following etiquette and there's some great injustice then you know it's up to it's up to Krishna to get involved you know if it's not our place the same with Prahlad Maharaj he didn't you know, when he was preaching at school, he wasn't saying, my dad's a big demon, he's punishing me, come on guys, let's tie him up and kill him. I mean, you know, he could have burned the house down, he could have become a little juvenile delinquent, you know, or like, you know, or done some other things. But he just depended on Krishna, and he continued to, you know, preach Krishna consciousness, but at the same time, um, he was respectful. So I don't have a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, mind map or anything, <laughs> but you know, there's a <clears throat> there's a one saying um, that kind of always struck me that if you create a, a strong enough why, the hows take care of themselves. So it means if we understand why coming to that platform is important enough, and that's through knowledge. If we really understand that, then how to come to that point, it kind of goes on automatically. So like that. Thank you very much for inspiring us. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one question comes to mind. Uh, when you